This is the EXC2 and it's the highest tier EMTB from Denago. So what spec differences does it have and what differences do those make? Let's take a ride and find out. Hey everyone, I'm John with Electric Bike Report. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button as we get started here, especially if you're considering buying an e-bike. We release a couple new reviews every week and we also have some other unique content coming up as well. So Denago released two electric mountain bikes in 2023. We already reviewed the base model, which is the EXC1, but today we'll be talking primarily about the upgraded EXC2. If you want to compare the two, we'll drop a link to the EXC1's review up there, and you can check out both bikes' performance in our speed, range, brake, and hill tests as we run through those things a little bit later. But first I want to talk about some of the main things that jumped out about the EXC2 and some of its major differences with the EXC1. Starting off, the motor here is the M510 mid-drive from Bafung. It has 250 watts of nominal output and 95 newton meters of torque. So this thing can really get you moving and it also really makes a difference when it comes to hills. We'll talk about the specifics of our hill test a little bit later on, but trust me, this bike is a boss. The motor on the base model is a bit less powerful, but there are quite a few other differences here between the bikes aside from price. The EXC2 comes with a higher capacity 48 volt 720 watt hour battery. It has a nine speed Shimano Olivio drivetrain with a 40 tooth chain ring and an 11 to 34 tooth cassette. So it has a little bit of a wider gearing range. The tires here are 29 inch by 2.4 inch Maxxis Recon race tires with a high performance tread pattern that has lower rolling resistance, but better grip for cornering and braking. The bike's front coil suspension is a bit more robust. It's the XCM34 model from SR Suntour. There's a Limotech dropper post here with 150 millimeters of travel. And then finally, the EXC2 has a full color Bafung display that's small and unobtrusive, but it's also really easy to read. So with all of those upgrades listed out, I think it's clear that there are some big differences that put the EXC2's higher price in perspective. The bike's MSRP is between $3,000 and $3,500, which if you take all that stuff and compare it with the competition, is actually some really good value, and we typically expect to see it going for at least a few hundred dollars more. But before we move on, I want to talk about something that the EXC1 and the EXC2 have in common, and that's just some good modern geometry that makes them both feel really solid out on the trails. Things like reach, top tube length, head tube angle, or seat tube angle, these things aren't always dialed in on affordable e-bikes, but Denago clearly has a team of people who know what they're doing. Let's wrap things up by running through the specs and features that I didn't cover yet, which are things that both the EXE1 and EXE2 have in common. This is a class one e-bike with its motor limited to 20 miles per hour. It's UL2849 certified, and it comes in three frame sizes. There's a medium, a large, and an extra large. We have the large model here. The bike uses Tektro E350 hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. There's a custom Denago saddle. And then depending on frame size, you get either 740 or 780 millimeter handlebars. There are standard rubber grips. There's a control panel and a dropper post lever on the left side. There's a rapid fire shifter on the right, and that about covers everything. So let's go see what happened when we tested the EXE2's real world performance. To test the EXE2's hydraulic disc brakes, we got the bike up to 20 miles per hour, applied the brakes, and then measured the distance it took to stop. Pretty straightforward. We repeated this process three times since every situation is different, and then we used those three measurements to calculate an average. So the EXE2's average stopping distance was 21 feet, two inches. 
which is a really solid result that's actually a bit better than we expected to see. The Tektro E350 system here is something we actually have a lot of experience with. Somewhere around two thirds of the bikes we've tested have used the same system and their performance has definitely varied quite a bit, although in all cases they've been acceptable. Our current average for all of the EMTBs we've tested is 22 feet 11 inches, so the EXC2 did about 21 inches better than average. I think part of the good performance is the variability that we've observed from this brake system, but also partially from the upgraded tires. As I mentioned, these have improved braking traction, so they grip on pretty well when the bike is slowing down. We thought these brakes felt great under practical application as well. If you're hitting the trails pretty regularly, we might recommend replacing the E350 brakes with a four piston system that won't require maintenance as frequently, but overall we think you'll be satisfied by the modulation and overall performance here. Let's go out on the EXC2 for a speed test together and see how fast the bike can go in each of its five pedal assist settings. We'll go over the results back here in the studio after we're done. All right, we are here on the Denago EXC2 to do a speed test. And I'm um, going here with no help from the motor, kind of right around 12 and a half, 13 miles per hour. But uh, we'll see what happens. We kick it up to eco mode. Feeling a good amount of power here, even from the lowest setting. Definitely takes the weight of the bike away, but it's also giving me some more as well. Uh, I'm actually up to seventh gear already, and we're cruising kind of right around 16 and a half miles per hour or so. Let's go up to tour mode, or maybe that's trail, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm going to shift up to eighth gear. I don't necessarily feel like I'm getting a lot more power, but I am going significantly faster. Looks like about 17 and a half here, maybe up toward 18. Let's see what happens in sport mode. There again, doesn't, you know, really feel a whole lot different in terms of uh, like the, the power that I'm getting. I'm just noticing that I'm going faster. So uh, looks like we're going kind of around 18 and a half or 19 miles per hour here. Let's kick it up to Sport Plus. So it looks like we're going not a whole lot faster, around 19 maybe. Yep, okay. And let's finish it off with uh, boost mode here. And I am going to shift up to ninth gear because I am feeling a little bit more from, from this one. Uh, which, yeah, that lines up. We're going kind of right about 20 and a half miles per hour, according to the bike's display. So, okay, we'll call that our speed test on the EXC2. I'll see you back in the studio. So the EXC2 uses a torque sensor that can give you more or less power from the motor, depending on how hard you pedal. I kept my effort as consistent as I could so we could really see the differences between settings, but I also didn't go crazy, so if you pedal harder you could probably go faster than I did, and vice versa if you pedal softer. With no pedal assistance I hit 12.8 miles per hour, which is a testament to how well balanced this bike feels. At 57 pounds it's not super heavy, but it's also not light. Going up to PAS1, the motor kicked in with a pretty significant amount of power. I hit 16.7 miles per hour there, and then stepping up through each setting, I reached 17.9 miles per hour in PAS2, 19 in PAS3, 19.6 in PAS4, and 20.5 in PAS5. We like really consistent and even increases in power between settings because that helps to give you the amount of power you expect. And for the most part, that's what we see with the data we gathered. PAS1 did have an unusually powerful starting point, so we wouldn't mind seeing that brought down a little bit for those who want to feel like they're just riding a normal mountain bike. But one good thing about the current setup is that the bike's lowest setting provides a really functional amount of power for trails. 
We found eco mode to be totally manageable, even on rocky single track, which allowed us to save the higher settings for going faster on smoother areas or climbing steep hills. We pedaled the EXC2 until its battery gave out in two different range tests. The first used the maximum amount of power in PAS5, and the second used the lowest setting, PAS1. So depending on the amount of power being used, our tests showed that you can get between 44.5 and 64.5 miles on a single charge, and those tests lasted between 2 hours and 55 minutes, and 4 hours and 38 minutes. There is one caveat there, which is that we did our tests on paved bike paths, and riding on trails or anywhere off-road is going to deplete the battery a bit faster. But we can compare our data with Denago's advertised range, which is 92 miles. Obviously, we were quite a bit below that in our PAS1 test, but we did have over 1,700 feet of elevation gain that inevitably brought our numbers down a bit. When looking at other EMTBs we've tested, the EXC2's PAS1 results did come in a little low in comparison, but we didn't think that was surprising considering the results of our speed test, which showed how powerful the bike was even in its lowest setting. And I think that's more reason to bring the power level down a little there. Its PAS5 results were some of the best we've seen, and that's basically because of the battery here. The other bikes we've tested with 720 watt hour batteries came with 500 watt mid drives instead of 250s, so it makes sense that the EXC2 was able to get a bit more distance from that capacity. We recommend doing your own range test on your local trails to see how far the bike will go for you, but ultimately we're pretty happy with the EXC2's results in our testing. You're really not sacrificing a whole lot when it comes to the power in PAS1, so it makes sense to use that setting most of the time and then kick things up when you need the extra help. As with every e-bike we test, we took the EXC2 to Hellhole Trail to test its climbing ability. Justin pedaled the bike up the path in PAS5, so I'll pass you over to him so he can share his experience. Okay, we are on the Denago EXC2 electric mountain bike with the Bafang M501 motor. Um, it's a motor that I've actually been very interested in testing for a while now. Um, so, you know, it's a mid drive, so I've got to put in a little bit here. But so far, it's climbing pretty good. Just about 10 miles an hour through that section 10.3, 10.4, in seventh gear. So I'll shift down through this next section so you can see, you know, kind of what that does. Motor noise is really low on this though. Um, pretty impressive on that. So I'll be quiet as I go through this section. So yeah, so I don't know if you could tell, but as I as I downshifted, there was a slight pause. The motor disengages for a split second to let me shift and then engages again. It's, I've had some other mid drives like that. And this is a little more responsive than those. Like it gets you right back there, but there is that slight delay. Um, but overall, curious to see how this stacks against some of the other, you know, high end mid drive motors and feels pretty good feels pretty quiet um, in general. So let's go to the tape and see how it does. Justin was able to make that climb in a minute and 29 seconds while maintaining an average speed of 12.2 miles per hour. And that's straight up one of the best hill tests we've seen from an EMTB. We weren't exactly surprised by that though, as most of Denago's e-bikes have performed really well in this test. To explain things a bit more, I'm going to compare this bike to the lower tier EXC1. That bike also did pretty well on this test, but there was a mile per hour difference in speed that made the EXC2 10 seconds faster, which is a direct result of the added 15 newton meters of torque on its motor. 95 total newton meters is a pretty serious amount of power for a 250 watt motor, so that's going to help you climb just about any hill you come across. We tested the bike out in the desert on some really steep hills made of loose dirt, and we noticed that there was a pause in motor output when shifting. 
This didn't come into play too much on flat ground, and even on hills it wasn't really that bad, but it is a feature we wish we could disable. Denago incorporated it on purpose to help prevent damage to the cassette, and we appreciate the encouragement to form good shifting habits, but once those are in place, we don't think it's necessary. Even with this feature though, the EXE2 had no trouble making some really tough climbs. Justin took the EXE2 out on some single track and double track out in the desert, and I'm gonna pass you over to him one more time to talk about ride quality. We'll wrap things up back here in the studio in a few minutes. All right, we are out on the Denago EXC2. This is their higher level cross country electric mountain bike. It has a few kind of key upgrades over the EXC1, primarily you have the Bethang M510 motor. So 95 Newton meters of torque, a little more powerful, a little smoother. Um, so there's a little lighter weight on trail off to check the specs on that. Um, same, same geometry which I like. Just feels nice and comfortable to get a reach, wider handlebars. Um, it's kind of what I would want personally in an XE bike. Again, geometry is kind of personal to some degree, but in general, I think that they've done a good job. Uh, the other difference is the front fork is the Suntour XCM34. And I can already tell you now, I just rode the XC1 and I am feeling that difference between the two this one does feel quite a bit more plush um, and is making this this trail and it's pretty smooth in most sections but there are some bumpy sections and it is really feeling nice there um, tires 29 inch maxis recon race 2.4 on the thickness i think and I'm, I'm a big fan of the recon or the yeah the recon race um, love the grip love the fill i'm riding them right about 25 26 psi in the front and oh let's go this way and about a little bit more in the rear um they feel good good traction just really great all around tire so love that they spec with maxis there you have a nine speed drivetrain it's the shimano Livio. definitely their entry level and in some longer climbs, like had that been much longer, or maybe two or three times longer, a little steeper, I would have probably wanted something like a Dior or SLX that goes out, you know, 11, 12 gears. Gives you a little, little more hill climbing capability. But so far in riding this, I actually haven't needed the extra gears. Um, so I can just kind of put it in turbo and make up for it. So, Going back to that motor, let's kind of shift down. I will say I like the display here. Very clean display, easy to see. The shifter buttons on the power, a little better feel than the M4 410 from the Fang. A little more natural and just easier to kind of control especially over the bumpy sections. It's just a good, good controller. I like screens, so I can kind of see how fast I'm going, what assist level I'm in. I've been in Eco this whole time, and I've been totally fine in Eco. Um, feels great. So the motor, you know, let's kind of kick it up and kind of push it a little bit here. I'll play around. Okay, so an eco, about nine, ten miles an hour up this, you know, small hill. Taking into S. Assuming it's sport. Do feel more of a jolt there. S plus. More output. Then boost. Definitely feel the output. So I'm going to kick it down from boost. Boost is giving me lots of power. Um, as far as how the power is delivered, it's very smooth. So as I am, as soon as I start to engage, I'm feeling good engagement from the motor. When I stop, it stops. Feels nice and precise. 
does feel powerful. I would not say it's like when I talk about how punchy a motor is, I usually compare it to the Bosch. It's not as punchy as the Bosch, but still feels really good. Let's see how it does on the rocks. Oh, yeah, I feel great up, up and down over that. Nice and nimble. Just good overall feel. I'm going to turn around and climb that to see how that motor feels over that rocky climb. Then we'll keep riding and see any more insights that I've got here. So again, I'm in sport mode right now. I'm going to leave it there. Oh yeah, up and over those, nice and easy. So I like that the kind of the punch that he does give the motor does not feel overly punchy. Nice and controlled and smooth. All right, so I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit more about the motor. You know, we just kind of went over the engagement. Um, as a quick note, I as I was going through the different assist levels, I, I missed T, which I think is trail or tour. Um, but there is good power differences between each of those assist levels. It feels nice and natural. The one thing that isn't super natural is if you're cranking it really hard and you need to, need to maybe like downshift, or maybe if I wanted to downshift here, there's a slight, the motor disengages for a second. And that's to kind of help you shift and protect the drivetrain. I don't notice it much at all on the flats, like right here. I'm really not noticing it at all. Um, but when you get to a hill, that is where you do notice it. And it's not, at first I was really concerned about it. And I, I you know, asked Denago, hey, why are you doing this? And they said it was on purpose to protect the drivetrain. And they, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we messed up. They did it on purpose. So I'm going to find a hill where we can climb up. If I just reverse what I just did, we'll be able to kind of show you what that does. Just that slight lag and give you an idea of if that's an issue. We'll wait till John comes down here. All right, so I'm going to get in like a really high gear where... I start climbing and I feel I need a, I need a downshift right, right here. And there's that lag, little lag. Let's do it again right here. So yeah, there is a little bit of a lag, but it is very, it's a lot quicker than some of the other motors that we've tested where the lag is just so great. You lose all your momentum. So I think the beginner is, possibly going to appreciate that because it's going to help protect your drivetrain as you're learning to shift and not do so under load. Um, more experienced person is going to feel like, wait, why is there this, why is there, why is there a little drag um, as I'm shifting down and climbing hills? But if you hit the hill with the right gear and if you keep your cadence good, I've found that, I, like I said, that lag isn't that big of a deal. Okay. So I'm going to see if this really shows how that motor does up something fairly loose and steep. I'm starting out in seventh gear, so I'm going to have to shift. Um, I'd probably normally hit this going in at like third or second. So actually I'm going to downshift to fifth or sixth. Make this a little more fair. Um, we're going to see if that the disengagement of the motor as I shift down, how that affects hill climbing. So I'm in boost. Let's rock and roll. It's so right here. I want to shift. Oh, you hear that on the drivetrain? That's why you want to hit it <laughs> before you shift or before you hit the hill. You want to shift. Let me do that again. I did feel like that motor disengaging. I kind of need a longer heel where I can really pedal. Let me try that again. Okay. It's gonna boost. Let's hit this. 
shift. So there was a little lag. But actually, I would say it did a little better. It did actually help protect that drivetrain as long as I was in a good starting gear. Okay, so overall, this Denago EXC2, I'd say it's a pretty capable entry level XC mountain bike. It is definitely more capable than the XC1 with the more powerful motor, the better front suspension, um, and I do like the display better. And it just kind of feels fun. Like this section here is pretty darn rocky. You know, I do hear some chatter on that. You know, the Alivio drivetrain right there back there. So, you know, you could upgrade that. You could upgrade to an air fork. Obviously that adds cost. And for what you're paying, I think this is quite a bit of value. Um, the other part that I really like is the seat post dropper that you get on this model. It just makes it that much more, I'm gonna call it capable. And, you know, I really do like to drop my seat post when I turn downhill. It just makes me feel more comfortable, helps me go a little bit more faster have a little more control and better handling on the bike. So overall, yeah, it's actually quite a lot of fun. Um, probably a little better than I was expecting from this, you know, Hartel EMTV. So I'm excited to see what Denago does going forward as they continually expand their line and grow. They just feel like they have a little more experience than you would expect out of a, such a young new brand. So again, the EXC2 is available in three frame sizes. The medium fits those from 5'5 to 5'9. The large goes from 5'10 to 6'1. So it was great for us. And the extra large is for riders between 6'1 and 6'5. I made a big deal about the bike's geometry before. So I want to run through the numbers there. The head tube angle is 67 and a half degrees on all three frame sizes, but the C tube angle varies from 74.1 degrees on the medium to 73 degrees on the extra large. The reach ranges from 444 millimeters on the medium to 484 millimeters on the extra large, and the effective top tube goes from 614 millimeters up to 667 millimeters. So with that geometry, I felt fairly stretched out on our large size frame, and those wide handlebars helped me to stay really balanced and stable. In terms of handling, the bike felt great. I could feel its weight, but it was distributed well, and between the handlebars and the 29-inch Recon Race tires, it had really precise steering and overall great maneuverability. The upgrades on the EXC2 really made a huge difference as well. The suspension is still fairly basic, but it did a great job of handling the rough trails we have here in Southern Utah. The dropper post made it much more comfortable and easy to keep my weight back when descending, and I've gotta say I really like the bike's display. It's worth mentioning that many of the components here are still entry level, so you're probably not gonna wanna ride super rough trails with tons of rock gardens and jumps, but the EXC2 is gonna be a great bike for smoother terrain and maybe some technical stuff every once in a while. The main thing that we took away from our testing with the EXC2 is that it may have an entry level price, but in most places it doesn't feel like an entry level bike. If you're taking it out on the trails all the time, there are probably some components here that you'll wanna upgrade once they wear out, particularly the drivetrain, the brakes, and the suspension fork. But all in all, this is a seriously awesome bike for the price and well worth the extra few hundred bucks over the EXC1. We learned that this is a seriously powerful bike with the ability to ride fast and climb hills with very little effort. Its brakes were solid. It felt great on the single track and double track we took it out on. And with that big battery, it has pretty decent range. It was honestly pretty difficult to find something to critique here. And the slight pause in motor output when shifting is really the only thing we came up with. 
it would be great to be able to disable that, but in most cases it wasn't a problem, and overall the motor felt more responsive than the one on the EXC1. Bottom line, we think this is a great purchase if you're looking for an affordable, but still super functional bike that you can realistically take out on trails. It'll get you to work and back just fine as well, so there's actually quite a lot of flexibility in what the EXC2 can do. If you're thinking about picking one up for yourself, we think you'll be glad you did, and to make that a bit easier, we will leave a link to Denago's website down in the video description. We give our honest feedback in every video, but we do earn commissions that help us to keep making high quality reviews. So please use that link to let us know you found this one helpful. It does not cost you anything extra. If you like reading, you can also check out the link to my written review of the bike, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the great content we have planned for 2024. Thanks for watching, and please let us know what you think of the EXC2 down in the comments section. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Denago EXC2.